Hey y'all. Um, I don't know why I do this to myself. I get so nervous getting um, on live with Facebook, but I do this thing to like, I just make myself do it just to get over the hump. But yesterday I posted this amazing song down below with Dolly Parton and um, oh, I just, music speaks to me and I can't carry a tune. Um, to save my life so whenever I feel moved by music it just it just speaks to my heart and I've always wanted to do this because I t speak a lot to the fact that um, I've had a lot of physical healing for different things that I've done but um, I've decided that it's time that I share my spiritual story um, I'm gonna make it quick I'm gonna chop it up into lots of little pieces but this is something that I feel like I I have to do for myself if not for anybody else but um, I don't know how it's going to work out. Um, you may be offering me virtual tissues. It'll be really embarrassing if I cry online. Um, but I know this is something I need to do. And just kind of like a video blog, vlog, I guess. I tried to write a book about a year and a half ago, and that did not turn out so well. I had to put that on a back burner. So perhaps this is a way for me to kind of speak off the cuff and get my personal story to the hearts um, of those who need to hear it, maybe to the people that wouldn't sit down and read. Um, but I have had some big things happen in my life. A lot of people know that, but um, not really just getting sick, but in that time witnessing some enormous, big, huge miracles um, before my eyes. And it was a time in my life when I, um, I was in and out of hospitals. I mean, I was progressively getting worse over 10 years. I mean, I was sick with Crohn's for 25 years total, but um, I was in and out of hospitals. I was raising three boys. Um, I mean, just not just being in the hospital takes away from your time as a parent, but I was sick every day. So um, that, that was a really long 10 years, and I kind of mark it with when I moved to Houston to when I moved away from Houston. I was getting super sick when we moved there and I feel that I kind of mark my healing point as when we left there. But um, at the end, I guess the quote, the end of my so-called health crisis, I was in the hospital for eight weeks. I was um, in bed for at least, at least two more months, uh, sprinkled in there. And then I was in the hospital three more times after the big major crisis for additional surgeries, recoveries, things like that. Um, but needless to say, my life has had a hard stop, if you may, on more occasions than I can, can count over 25 years. I mean, every time I try to think about all my hospital stays or try to get them in my head, I, I think of another one. Um, and that's crazy, right? I, I just, I was in and out of the hospital all the time for pain. Um, but instead of drowning in those sorrows, I was always really committed to using that time that I was band to the couch to grow, to read, to learn, to rest, um, to kind of catch up on life. I, I tried never to really um, let those hard times set me back. I, I had a focus um, to, to grow from it. But um, more importantly, when I was sitting, and I, did a, I had to do a lot of sitting, which is ironically when I started two different little side hustles, my business, my stationary business. But um, I was just watching and waiting for miracles. And I believe wholeheartedly, and I say this to my kids, but miracles pass us by. We, we, we have miracles in our life every day, but we never see them. Just like I say to my kids, they're sitting here watching their phones, life is passing them by, they have no idea, they don't lay and look at the solar system when we're driving in the dark at night. But I think we're the same way. Busyness is a real culprit. And um, it steals the joy of being able to see those um, small miracles that I think turn into large miracles that happen every single day for each of us. It doesn't have to be a, a miracle that, oh my gosh, my life was saved. There are little ways every day that um, I think are God winks and um, the way God enters our lives. But I'm reading an amazing book right now, and it's called The 66 Love Letters. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of this, but it's by Dr. Larry Crabb. And um, I was so taken in the first chapter or so, but it talks about how your life is part of a larger story. Um, everything, but everything we do on a daily basis is part of our smaller story, including, you know, driving to practice, going to the grocery store, moving, meeting new people in your life. Um, but the good and the bad, it all advances the plot of our individual stories. And that's the small story. But the trick is to know um, the story 
the little stories, to grasp it, to grasp what we've learned and grown from and remember it each day so that we can continue to grow and learn. And um, I guess that's where wisdom comes in as we get older. Uh, but that's not easy to do. Um, but it's the only way that you can intentionally join the larger story, this book says, which I liked how he said that. If you think about it, it's the smaller story that steals our attention, right? Our daily issues, what's going on, whether I was sitting on the couch, I was in the hospital, that's what steals our attention and, and, and consumes our our energy. But it's the, um, and that, that also includes our feelings and our emotions, and we can really get tripped up by our feelings and our emotions, and they can really get us down too, because they're hard to get past many times. But another thing that I've learned is that God never promises that life is going to be easy or perfect or even fun, but life is not necessarily the things that are given to us, but how we respond to the things that are thrown at us is so important. Um, and, and that's I think that's huge because I think that we can drown in our sorrows or choose to see our moments and our struggles as a way to learn and to share and to help other people. So. On my final hospital stint of six weeks, we were completely desperate. We didn't know the outcome. We had lots of fear. <coughs> Excuse me. So many amazing friends and strangers were sending me words of encouragement and texts and prayers and Facebook messages. I, I couldn't keep up. It was so amazing um, how word travels like fire, of course, um, when I was sick that I didn't even have a part of spreading that. I mean, I was in bed and really unable to communicate with many people, but um, people were praying for me and people that I've met, like I'll meet people. I ran into someone when I went back to visit Houston after I moved here that said, oh my gosh, you're a penny sampler. I prayed for you, which if I think about that too hard, that just brings me to tears. Um, someone recently sent me a picture that showed the prayer card that they had in their Bible that they were using as a bookmark but that it was um, that they had prayed for me. And to me that at the time, that was the most incredible gift. Everybody was offering to help my family or help me. And um, all I said was pray. I mean, that's the only thing we can do at this point is just pray for me. So the fact that people took time out of their busy schedules, out of their families, um, and took a moment to remember me or to think of me or to pray for me, makes me cry every time I think about it too long. I can't think about it. It's so incredibly humbling to be on the receiving end of prayer when you need it so desperately. But bottom line, my minister um, told me after hearing all my stories, Penny, you really need to share those stories. Those are not yours to keep, which is, was kind of an interesting um, viewpoint. And he said, they're God's to share. They're not yours to keep. If anything, you need to let those know that prayed for you um, that they need to hear how their prayers were answered because they need to know that what they did worked and thus increase their faith in the power of prayer. So I thought a lot about what he said and as soon as I was able to focus a little bit off some medication that allowed me, I tried to write everything down in my family blog and I'm so grateful I did because so many of those details would definitely have been lost by now. But Close family friends and family read them, but of course it wasn't widely circulated. It was a private family blog. Um, and then about a year and a half ago, I set out, I really wanted to write a book. That was my thing. I was going to write a book and that's going to be how I tell the world my story. Um, and the intention of my book was to be an encouragement to people with Crohn's. It was to share my miracles and my faith and to make fun of myself, quite honestly. Um, and to, just to impart the incredible, um, when you have a, any illness, but for sure a GI illness, you have to have a sense of humor because otherwise the only other option is to curl up in a ball and die of embarrassment or disgust. It's just, it's, it's no walk in the park to have a GI illness. But that book didn't go so well. My plans, I guess the smaller picture, were not so good. Um, I ended up with anxiety that I have never felt before. I didn't know what anxiety really felt like. And um, through the encouragement of my husband and my family, I needed to go talk to someone. So I ended up at a counselor who then referred me to a psychiatrist for PTSD. And um, I, I didn't understand, you know, for me, PSD, PTSD is, you know, for gosh, military. Um, you know, I associate it most with people who have fought and seen horrific 
horrific things, but um, they taught me that perhaps that's not the only way that you have PTSD. And for the most part, I embrace that awful time as the best and the worst time in my life. And I do accept the bad with the good because I know how much I grew out of that time. But I still have incredible, incredible anxiety thinking about the pain um, that I endured with no relief. That's where the, the PTSD comes in. Um, I was on all the drugs, every bit of it. Praise God, I never, I never got addicted, which is a complete miracle in and of itself. All the pharmaceuticals that are sold on the streets, I had every single one of them legally <laughs> by IV, shot, pump, mouth. Um, I premedicated even with um, big, huge drugs that didn't even, didn't even cover the pain. Um, and I did that before wound care, which truthfully, that was the beast. That was horrible because nothing touches people digging around in your belly um, with knives and tools. And you have a direct sight, line of sight of what they're doing. So none of that was lovely or worth remembering. So um, sitting at a computer and thinking about all that and rehashing it, um, I couldn't get it out of my head. I have a little bit of OCD, which might be why I'm forcing myself online right now. But um, I just, just getting all that into words didn't work out so well for me at that time. I haven't given up, but for now it's postponed. So I'm, I'm taking a new approach. But um, everyone who knows me knows that my faith is huge and it's a huge part of who I am. I was never a person that would shout that from the mountaintops, but I've always had strong convictions and a strong family. And I really credit that my life was fairly easy um, to the power of a praying parent. There's actually a book called that um, by Stormy O'Martian, which I love and have read many times through. But I know my mom and dad um, prayed for me and for my sister on a regular basis, not just when I was sick, but just my entire life. And I think that made a huge difference in who I am and who I became. But I think we all need to be praying for our children consistently. And I'm on the top of the list for needing to do a better job. But prayer, bottom line, is powerful, incredibly powerful. And I do think um, that some people who know me, when I talk about my miracles or talk about what happened, think that, oh, that's just, that's just who you are. You're just, you're just a Jesus girl. You, you get that, or you have a better connection. I've heard that a lot. You have a better connection with God. But let me tell you that um, until I was desperate and truly watching and expecting prayers to be answered, I've never experienced anything like the power of an answered prayer um, before, like big prayers. Um, and to be able to see them with your own eyes is, um, they were life altering prayers. But human words cannot um, impart what I felt. Um, there's this, this feeling that comes over you and I can't, even, I can't even put it to words, but how the timing was impeccable, people that came into my life at the absolute perfect time, strangers, words that were said to me um, through the years, I had someone walk up to me, this is totally squirrel moment, but when I was working, um, still not married, working at Tol in Tulsa at St. John, I had a patient's family member walk up to me um, while I was standing at the, um, you know, charting. And this man said to me, um, I, just, I just really feel the need to tell you that everything's gonna be okay. And I just, I went to the therapy room and just started bawling because I had just found out that I was gonna have my second surgery that the first one was horrific and of course they got worse from there but I was scared to death to have a second surgery and that this person who I now think was my angel walked up to me and said I just I just feel like I was told to tell you that everything's gonna be okay and just amazing little moments like that are huge moments but I always um, imagine that like I've always imagined my life like an orchestra like God is the conductor of an orchestra bringing in the violins and then bringing in the horns and then the big drums. And, and that's kind of how I imagine God orchestrating my life um, every perfect moment to prove his goodness and his sovereignty to me and to everyone who is connected to my situation, who, who knows exactly what's happened. It was powerful, incredibly powerful. So this is my plan. I don't want to go too long. I want to be short. I'll break it up into short parts the best I can. And, as I always say, I don't do these videos to be seen by any stretch of the imagination. So um, I do it to be heard. Hopefully you can pop in your AirPods, go for a walk, um, do it while you're cooking. I don't care. 
But I know that without a doubt, my story of physical healing, which I've told you many times, can touch the lives of so many. But I also know my story of spiritual growth and healing can be used to touch just as many or more. So as I've mentioned before, the blog that I started to keep when I realized I might have a story to tell and a way to help others about really about 15 years ago, which is crazy to imagine it's been that long, but it always unintentionally, I never set out to say this, ended with, I cannot wait to tell you how this story ends. And, um, oh gosh, I mean, I believed that I could be healed. I knew I could be healed, but I didn't know if that was how God wanted my story to end. I didn't know where my story ended. So I had the faith, but I didn't know if it was going to be an earthly healing. There were times that I was prepared that, um, perhaps my life on earth was going to be cut short and that that was going to be my story and that's why I subconsciously or consciously started a blog so that I had words um, left for my children and left for my family um, anyway so I can't wait to tell you how this story ends it's going to be good and there's going to be lots of neat miracles and neat stories so next time that I get brave <laughs> I'll hop back on here and start with miracle number one. This is just my intro to the future. Everybody have a great day.